Our featured guest is Joe Saluzzi, the co-head of trading at Themis Trading. Joe, I want to start with you. And, you know, while we're up, let's talk about this rally that we've seen from, if you want to start from July, the middle of July, you want to yep. start from the middle of uh, March. Uh, what do you see in this rally? Because it's been obviously strong and, and sizable, but low volume. A lot of people are saying it's just the mother of all short squeezes. Well, I, I think the stock, we've got to make a distinction between the stock market and the economy. Totally different things right now. The stock market is certainly being driven by momentum, intraday buying, short squeezes, performance chasing, whatever you want to call it. But there is a certain disconnect between the stock market and the economy. And let's look at Tim Geithner's words today. He's seeing signs very of, bullish. I thought he was very of bullish a recovery, today. improving confidence, signs of housing stabilization. I got one question. In the words of Barney Frank, what planet does he live on? Is he kidding me? Is he, maybe he lives on the same planet as the AIG CEO who claims to be paying back the government, which I don't think so. I look at 13% of or, or delinquency or foreclosures in prime mortgages now. We're not talking subprimes anymore. We're talking regular people like me and you who can't pay their mortgage. And this and is the big, by the way, this is the big slice of the pie, right? Because <laughs> subprime and option arms, that's a little piece yeah, of all the 56 million the, mortgages in this country. That's right. That's the big deal. And, and the last bill that I'm going to make sure I pay is my mortgage. I'm going to make sure my mortgage is paid before anything else because that's my house. So if these people can't pay their mortgage, that means they're not going to spend on retail. Maybe you'll force them to buy a car because you'll give them some deal over there, but they don't have the money left. And that's what I don't understand what Geithner sees there. So anyway, that's the economy. That has nothing to do with the stock market because the stock market is in a world of its own. Well, the housing data has shown some signs of improvement. There have been positive data points. We even hear from the most bearish of analysts, Karen Weaver at Deutsche Bank. Yesterday she said, look, there are some positive data points in the last few weeks. You can't take those away, right? And the housing market turns on psychology. There's no stabilization yet. Foreclosures are still rising. I, I would, I, the best story I've seen over the last couple of weeks was a New Jersey Star Ledger story. Foreclosures they thought were down in the first six months. Well, in fact, they're up 30 percent. The reason why they got it wrong was the courts were so backed up with foreclosure notices, they couldn't even keep up with them. Look, and the more foreclosures means the more supply that comes on the market, which means the lower the prices go. We're not out of this. No matter how you want to spin it, no matter which pundit or bullish, you know, green shoot addict out there, you're not out of the mess. But again, it doesn't matter to the stock market, and you can't fight the stock market. Okay, you, if you're going to be short right now, you're going to get your head handed to you. That's just the way it is. Eventually, it will turn. Well, well, I have well, no well, idea. why is that? Is that because Wall Street buys into all these green shoot arguments? I mean, you've you got to expect, if anyone's going to be bullish and a cheerleader for the economy, Tim Geithner's your man, right? It, it's cheerleader city. But I mean, he's, he's got the job. whole squad out there. Yeah, but you know, his job is also to be to tell the truth to the American people. Just like when they lied about the unemployment rate not going over 8.5% for the budget next year, and in fact, we know we're closing in on 10 you know, we want the truth. I can't model my own forecast if I have bad information. So don't cheerlead me and tell me lies. Tell me what the real truth is, okay? And that stuff like that today, he couldn't even move the market really on today's comments, which is pretty interesting if you ask me. All right, here, we're gonna, I'm writing this down. We're going to come back and talk about unemployment in a second. Hey, Alan, hang on a second. Joe, I want to bring you back in here. Alan makes a good point. You know, you can be mad if you want about the disconnect between the markets and, and the economy, but you still want to make money, right? And that's your main job. I'm not mad. I mean, I'm a realist. Once again, I always come in here as a realist. I'm not saying I'm short. I'm not saying I'm going to fight it. But what I'm saying is, let, let's be real here. I mean, the stock market is on its own path. Let me give you a quick fact. The top five stocks today, which are now our leadership, AIG, Citibank, Bank of America, Fra Freddie Mac, and Sirius Satellite, were close to 25% of the entire U.S. stock market this morning when I ran the numbers. 25% of the volume is being dominated by five zombie stocks, okay? Is that the leadership we want, or do we want real companies leading out in volume? That's my problem. But, but, but as a trader, I mean, this is what you do day in and day yeah. out. I'm are you, are you, are, what, are, what are you looking at to tell you that that's going to happen? I mean, how do you know that these stocks that people were rubbing their hands together to short when they did a reverse split 1 to 20, sure. now they're the leadership of the market? What's why going you, on? I, I say to anybody who shorts AIG, why would you short a stock where the U.S. government owns over 500 million shares and it's locked up and you can't borrow it? It's ridiculous, okay? There are certain stocks that you want to short, but shorting is a very difficult in the game nowadays because of the borrowers are much more difficult. The easier game is just to buy, and the deep pockets and the intraday buyers are doing that. But when you look at the long-term flow of funds coming into the market week after week, there is not that much money coming in. So that tells me investors don't believe it, but the traders do. And that's okay. You can still make money. All right. Hey. All right, Courtney, thanks very much. Let's talk uh, more with Joe Saluzzi from Themis Trading here about, I want to talk about the jobs picture uh, quickly so more people could go out and get 
buy clothes at the Gap or Old Navy, right? Uh, we saw a number that was worse than expected today with first-time uh, jobless claims. But Tim Geithner had kind of bullish comments saying the jobs picture is getting better. Yeah. You can't deny that the last number was much better than expected, the monthly number. So, so why? Well, what, mean, do you, what do you expect you know, this month? One month. One month that they got, what, one-tenth of a point better than expected. It's going over 10. Obama said it. They all said it. We all know it's going over 10. Where it stops, we have no idea. People are out of work. Unemployment claims are stopping because they're running out. They have to continue to extend the unemployment benefits, which is, by the way, going to cost the taxpayers more money. Okay, how, where do we stop? Stop here. And you know, do you want to talk about the cash for clunkers program? I mean, that, that to me is another taxpayer subsidized bailout. Unfortunately, we bailed out the foreign automakers this time. Eight out of the top ten cash for clunker trade ins were foreign cars. Now, that's not fair. A lot of those guys putting those cars together are working in Ohio and Somewhat. Tennessee. Some, but still, the owner of the car who makes the money is still based in Japan. And okay? they buy our bonds with that money. Exactly. Okay, so look, cash for clunkers. Over 400,000 cars were done, right? That means 400,000 people who had a car that was paid for now have a car payment. Guess what? Can they now spend money on back to school clothes, Christmas shopping, and whatever else, you're just going to take three, four hundred dollars a month out of their pocket. Nice job, government. At least it's better for the environment, right? Yeah, right. Dumping, dumping acid on the yeah, engine, then, what are we throwing doing them those? into the garbage dump, and building whole new cars. Uh, all right, so cash for clunkers, you're not a big fan of it. Yeah. It still has, you got it. You got to expect GDP to pick up in the third and fourth quarter, right? Because of a lot of this stuff, production's going to rise, Ford's starting to add more people, more shifts, I all mean, the car makers are. Do you that, expect a well, pop in the I mean, economy? I'm not a, I'm Artificial not the, or not? I mean, I'm not the economist. That's what they say, so I guess we have to believe them. Yeah, right. Like, I believe anything they say. No, I, I look at the facts again, Matt. I mean, we look at toxic bank assets. One of the biggest concerns I have is that this rally started when the mark-to-market -market accounting rules were relaxed back in April of this year, and everything started going crazy, and the banks got all good. Well, guess what they're doing now? They're talking about thinking that maybe we need to readjust those rules again. And if they start changing them, then what happens to bank earnings? You're going to have to actually value you those loans at cost or real real prices we've got issues here and then we talked about all the other ones housing and everything else well, a lot of them would be insolvent in that case yeah well then there we go and then, so I, are we good do you actually think they'll do that I think they have accounting tricks okay you, you can't make money on accounting tricks eventually you got to pay the piper or you got to hope that the loans perform and if what you're seeing in foreclosures and unemployment these loans aren't going to perform now you talk about that helping the rally obviously China helped the rally as well starting in March Obviously, artificial stimulus plays a big part here. Point here. What, what do you think about China? I mean, people have been paying such close attention to China lately. Oh, yeah, it's the biggest casino in the world out there. I mean, that's the, the Chinese stock market. I, mean, I don't, I don't play the Chinese stock market. I'd rather go down to Atlantic City and bet over there. All right, hang on a second. Uh, we're going to go down. Cheaping, cheaper heating bills are, I guess, a good thing for the consumer. Uh, Joe, what do you think about uh, oil? You, you've had some great calls. I remember you're calling the tops and bottoms of the oil market before. What do you think about seventy-two dollars a barrel here? Uh, I don't think you're going to get any much, much more. Help from the speculators they seem to be cracking down on the speculators on the oil which means you're gonna have to have real economic demand for oil so I wouldn't necessarily belong here oil what do, what do you think about the fact that you know a lot of big bears out there seem to be so set on on bearishness and so excited about bearish news that it, they they seem like they might not see the turnaround if in, it indeed does happen I mean are you concerned uh, about that perma bears always lose right you don't want to be a perma bear which you know I've been accused of and I am bearish still but it doesn't mean you can't trade in and out but what I would warn everybody is we never know when the black, next black swan is going to come, right? We, because that's what makes it a black swan. So you better be careful and you better protect yourself and don't think that these gains you're seeing are really based on, on, on real economic fundamentals. Take your money and enjoy your trading, but you better be careful out how there. How do you do that in this market? I mean, we had Nookman talk about selling puts, a lot of people talking about how you hedge this market, waiting for the fall. What are you doing as a trader? Well, most of these guys are intraday traders out there now. Most, most volume you see is intraday volume, which means you're coming in, you're buying them in the morning and you're getting flat by overnight. So you don't care what happens overnight. The exposure to an overnight now is tremendous because of the levels that we're at. So I, I think you keep your trades real short term unless you found a company that you really believe in, but unfortunately fundamentals don't seem to matter anymore. Joe, it's always a pleasure <laughs> having you on the show. Joe Saluzzi from Themis Trade.